tell us the name of these caves and where they are in Israel. I think a lot of them were made popular through Indiana Jones, but there's a ton of these caves. Where, where, what, are, what are the caves called and where are they in Israel? Mm -hmm. Well, in 1946 through 1956, 11 scrolls were found. They're called the Dead Sea Scrolls. They weren't found in the Dead Sea, but they were found in the caves, the, the area next to the Dead Sea. And then in 1952, in cave number three, one of the famous caves, cave number three, uh, they found something that was unusual because it was a copper scroll. The others were on skins of animals, on parchment paper. But the, the one scroll was a copper scroll. Many think that it was written by five different people because the handwriting etched on the scroll is, is distinctly different. But in that copper scroll, it mentions Jeremiah, the prophet. It mentions Haggai. It mentions Zechariah. These are, these are prophets from Israel. These are names of books of the Bible. Matter of fact, in those original uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, almost the entirety of the Jewish Bible, the 39 books, there are sections of almost all of them in there. And, and the that's a picture, by the way. That's a picture of one of the Copper Scrolls. Yeah, yeah. See how it's the the letters are hammered in there, and and so um, so really, Jim Barfield began studying uh, the the scrolls uh, in 1995. Go go with his study of that. Then in 2009, he began to study particularly the Copper Scroll. That's been his concentration, and uh, the Copper Scroll is interesting. Not not only because it mentions names that we know from the Bible, not only because it has five different authors, but because it's so specific on items that you'll find. And so what we're going to look at on Monday night, he's going to take these the Copper Scrolls, he's going to take the, show the ancient Hebrew, go to the modern Hebrew, go to the Strong's Word, and then he's going to say, here's what the message is saying. And then go out to the dig site and actually look at these locations and see how accurate they are. There's some clues. And the clues have been flipping the map of Qumran to match Jerusalem and then taking the measurements and seeing how incredible they are. And then I think that, yeah, there's a, there's a flipping of that map. And now I want to make sure our audience understands because this is what lost me on radio today. But then I, I started asking more you know, uh, questions and we got to it. Um, you take a map of Jerusalem and the Jaffa Gate and the Watchtowers and the Column of Boaz and all these things, and you take that actual map and then you flip it over uh, there into these caves. And this is a series of caves. And if you read the Copper Scroll, if you read this scroll down here, and you start laying things out based on finding clues from the Copper Scroll we saw a while ago, you if you find one of the items and then you find another one of the items, pretty soon you realize, oh, this is actually in these caves laid out. And that's where he now has figured out that this is actually a series of caves. And in this series of caves, you have laid out in the right line, these various things. And so clearly Solomon was trying to hide these things from being taken and stolen should, should Rome be sacked, which of course we know happened in AD 70. And, and hopefully someone one day would find them. And now at this time, when we have so many other prophetic biblical things going on that are setting up, I think, for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled, along comes a guy who's studying the Copper Scrolls and says, let me go look in here and see what I can find. Boom, we found this, we found that. Oh, I think what we have here is actually um, a template of the uh, map there in Jerusalem. He just duplicated it so that if someone can find one or two of them and line it up, they'll find all of them. Do I have that accurate? Yeah, you do. You know what's interesting? Jesus spoke in parables, and a lot of times later he had come, the disciples would come and say, okay, what does that mean? And so then they finally said, okay, why are you speaking in parables? He said, because, because the Bible said they're going to hear, but they're not going to understand. In other words, it was, it was a riddle. And I think that's the case of these scrolls. Once you, you crack the riddle and you see the meaning, it's, a, it's fantastic because it's going to point to a number of items. There's 57 caves now that have numbers, that has things that we know about them uh, that, are, that are mentioned in the, in the Copper Scrolls. Those can be charted. Uh, you can see they've gone in and they've done some, uh, some measurements to see ferrous material versus non-ferrous material. And 
if what, they're, what the scrolls say, it looks like there's a, an incredible payload of gold. It looks like there could be items from the house of Moses, or we would call it the tabernacle. These could be items that march through the wilderness. The ephod, the, the, the breastplate of the priest that he asked questions to God to decipher, uh, that is said to be there. Another copy of the scroll, like we're reading from, would be there. Uh, the the pot. That maybe the Ark the of the Covenant. Of maybe the Ark of the Covenant. And maybe the Ark of the Covenant. So any one of those things would be an incredible treasure. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I understand the gold is incredible. Matter of fact, I did a calculation since we talked today, and the current value of of that one payload of gold looks to be about two. Uh, two and a half billion dollars. Two and a half billion That's... dollars. Okay, I want to I explain what he's talking about here. Here, they've, what they've done is they've taken this Lorenzo Z1, which is a big, big, excellent metal detector, okay? And they scan, and they find that red, orange, and blue indicate gold, silver, and brass. The green indicates iron or steel, okay? So what, what they do is they end up with this imagery coming in, and they're able to say, all right, we're pretty sure we've probably got gold or silver. Well, one of the areas where they think they've got gold equals this area right here of, of, of gold bars, which you're saying that's valued at how much, that one area? Yeah, that's about two and a half billion. So two and a half billion dollars that they're able to say, based on this scanning they're doing of the ground that penetrates the ground, that we got about two and a half billion dollars of, of gold right there. And yet you said today that is one of the smaller areas. So when you're all mm -hmm. said and done, you're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars in gold, not to mention just the artifacts because their antiquities and how old they are in themselves could be worth trillions of dollars. The significance of this is Revel uh, Ezekiel 38 specifically says that the nation surrounding Israel invade her for her treasure and they specifically meant grabbing gold and silver, correct? Yeah, gold, silver, and spoils. And who would not want a spoil that, that if it had some of the, the items from the from the temple or the the breastplate of the the priest with the with the gemstones there, the, uh, like I, I said, I've been to to Egypt, I think over forty times. I've seen the the treasures of King Tut. What they're talking about here makes King Tut's treasures look like a miniature. Uh, this why is why is this important? Number one, it's important to the Jewish people because it's going to show it's going to establish. The ownership of that of this area is going to prove the authenticity of their Bible and the and the ancient records. For Christians, it's important because again, it shows the authority of the Bible. It shows that we can take the Bible literally. That when God says this is what's going to happen, you know what? Just like you said, sooner or later, if we're patient, we're going to see it happen. And I think for the Muslim people, it's going to show that they did not occupy, they did not own the land. This is why this is so critical. And so, so this, is a, this is a major uh, discovery, and uh, we have to patiently wait to see what's there. But I really think that I think your, your viewers are going to enjoy watching what's already been unfolded and the code that's been cracked so that we can see the potential find that's, that's here in this spot. Now, he'll be with us on uh, Monday night, 730 Central. That's the plan right now. And he's over there. He bounces between his home in Oklahoma back to Israel. And so uh, we're going get to get into a lot of this. And, and uh, we're getting a scoop here, I think, is what we're getting. Is that what you call it? Well, I yeah, I, I think we're – I'm just trying to, to – I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep between now and then. That's how and by the way, he, you made a good point this 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 – this this uh, one o'clock broadcast today, he doesn't want any of the gold. So he's not searching for this to take the gold. He's saying, let's give it to the Temple Institute so they can do whatever they want with it. Yeah, one of the reasons why I really bond with with this man is because he's not a treasure hunter. I, I've, I've been around treasure hunters. I've I've been in enough areas of the world where they're looking for treasures and 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 so on like that, and they they all want to claim them. He doesn't. He he. If you offered him uh, a necklace made out of a piece of that gold, he wouldn't wear it. If, he told me, he said he wouldn't take a ring. He'd rather have a thank you from the people of Israel for showing that the Bible is true. Uh, that, that's his point, is to, is to recover this and to show that there's going to be a day when the temple is going to be rebuilt and it's going to take place exactly as the Bible outlined it already. Absolutely.